Hi there guys, it's Tony here from Caveman Props with another tutorial for you today. I seem to be sticking with the space gun themes. Um, we're going to be building uh, the a set of the Star-Lord pistols um, from Guardians of the Galaxy and of course the MCU um, in turn. So um, I know a lot of people who have been cosplaying Star-Lord have either bought um, prop replicas of this and a lot of people have also bought the the toy version and done a mod respraying of them. There's nothing wrong with this, all of them look absolutely perfect. Um, to me, I've looked at reference images and I think we can actually build a pretty good replica um, of the pistols using EVA foam and I've had an idea when I've sat down and templated it all out and I'm going to build that for you now with those, um, using those templates. If you wish and you want to follow along, those templates should be available on our Etsy page. So you head off to our Etsy page for Caveman Props and you can download yourself a copy of those templates and follow along and try and build this prop with us. So we're going to crack on now and I'm going to show you how we can build this prop quite inexpensively um, with some simple sheets of EVA foam. Okay, so we're going to be part, starting off with part number one um, from the template. And I'll put on here times four because you want to want two parts for each gun. So obviously, normally we're building a pair. If you're only building one, you'll only need two. But obviously, I've set this all up for building both pairs. So you want to cut this out four times um, and stick two of them together, or two together, so you then have two that will be 20 mil wide. If you can get some 20 mil foam, that's brilliant. Or if like me you've got a scroll store you can stick two pieces together already and um, then just cut it out you, um, if you haven't and you cut them out individually you might just need to sand the edges just to get that point so I've done these so I've got two of them already to go the left and the right and um, to cut the trigger bits out I just cut in at the top here cut this bit out and then cut in at the bottom here cut this bit out and then just stuck them back together just use some super glue on that so that gets them back in. So that's our hand section there. What I'm going to do now is get the sander and we're just going to sand some edging details on here so it's just a little bit more of a comfortable hand grip. Make a decision which is left and right because obviously you want to make sure you've got the thumb section in on there and that one so it's, it's a bit more comfortable. So we're going to crack on with that. What I've also done to jump ahead is I've cut out the next parts of the template so parts two and three these will give us the top and bottom sections um, so I've cut out two tops and one bottom these bits that I've marked out here are not for cutting out they're only for reference so this marks on there and you just mark it on there because that is going to tell us where these bits go so the bottom one goes on there the top one should sit about there so they sit at that sort of ratio apart from each other so that's how it's going to go together but we're going to get the detailing sanding of this done so that's more detailed and then stick these on there so we're going to crack on with that and then we'll work on the rest of the detailing going off here okay just as uh, going back over the details when I cut these bits out um, I've obviously cut them straight top and bottom when I've cut the sides I've angled the knife in a little bit so that's given me a slight bevel on here so that when that goes on there obviously we're going to be building this bit round so we want to start if you're not too comfortable you can cut it straight and then work with the sander to get that straight but I just thought it'd be easier just to cut that in at a slight bevel already just so that we're ready to go so when they're on so I did that on all of them so so we're going to get this bit sanded and then get these bits on Okay, so I've done these bits. I've sanded down in between here and the back here. That makes the grip a lot more comfortable to hold in your hand and it's looking a lot better. And I've stuck the, the top and bottom pieces on. I've done that on both sections. So what we're going to do now is going to work on more of the tube bits that go on here. If you want, you can use something like a piece of PVC pipe. Um, but what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this. This is a 20mm um, foam dowel. So I'm going to be using this as our section that's going to be going in there. So we're going to have one on the bottom, two on the top. And what I'm going to do is, because obviously it starts with a flat edge, I'm going to take the flat edge from that end because this end is going to be slightly angled. So I'm going to get that one in, slightly angle that one, and then that angle should be good enough to start the bottom one there. 
cut straight there. So I'm going to crack on, get this on. So we want two pieces for the top, one for the bottom, obviously on both sections. So we're going to get this in now, get the dowel in, and then we'll um, show you what the next bit is. Alright, so there we go. So we've got those bits of dowel on there to represent the barrel. It's looking quite good, and obviously being foam, it cuts down a little bit on the weight as well. So the next pieces we're going to need from the template is four and five, which are these pieces. Um, these will be caps which will go on the ends here. And then um, six and seven. Now six is designed, that's going to go around the base here. And seven is going to go around the top up here. So I'm going to cut those bits out. Obviously I've done these bits to scale to the um, the 20mm foam dowels. So if you're using PVC pipe or something that's a little bit bigger or slightly different size, um, always leave a little bit on the edge and just trim it down just to make it fit. But we're going to cut these bits out and we'll get them on. Alright, so there you go. As you can see I've got them on. So I've got these bits on as the end caps. The bottom one um, is slightly more egg shaped, so you want the point more in at the top, the circle at the bottom. This one is just a perfect oval that just goes around the end there. And then obviously these pieces on fit on round here. So the next piece we're going to fit on is I've got this. This is just a piece of 5mm foam which I've just cut into a long strip. And what we're going to do is we're going to stick this round here as well. And what we're going to do is going to get it to poke in the middles there, start about there, and that's going to be a wrap round similar to this there, so there's going to be two of them, there's no point templating this, we just cut the piece and put it on, so we're going to put one there, one there, and then we're going to do the same on the bottom, we're going to do one about there, and one there, so we're going to get these bits on, and then crack on. Okay then, so we've got those bits on there, as you can see that's now starting to add the details there. With the last bit of detail we're going to use at the moment now is the soldering iron and what I'm going to do is, there's going to be some little marks down here so I'm just going to try and mark them onto there the soldering iron some little marks like that, so do them on this bit as well I'm going to do that front and back on all of this, and down here as well. Obviously if you use something like PVC pipe, and this could be a bit of a problem, the easiest way you can get around it is to wrap something like a 2mm foam around a piece of PVC pipe, and you'll be able to get this effect into the outside of it. So there we go, so that's that bit all done. And now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the top and bottom pieces, the wrap round. Right, so for the next bit we're going to move on to this part of the template. Now I've labelled this bit and um, part 8 and 9. Um, for the simple fact is this part is going to be 8 which goes across the top. But I'll put these um, dotted lines here. So if you cut there, or what I have here, folded there and there, this bit then becomes the correct size you need for number 9, so which is going to be the smaller part. So rather than doing two separate pieces of template, both are in one, so all the details will stay the same within this. It just needs to be shorter here and shorter there. So what we're going to do is get these bits, so it's obviously I'll put times 2 or times 4. So you need 2 of um, part 8 and 2 of part 9, which we're going to do now. Okay, I'll cut... Um, Part 8 and part 9 out, so obviously they're about the same, just a little bit different. What I've done is I've marked in where the edges are here, but just left a little bit, um, because it's going to wrap round, just want to be sure that it should be right to that, but it's safer just to leave a little bit extra, just so you know. So what we're going to do now is go back to this, so I'm going to take all these details, move them onto these, and then we're going to etch those details in. So now we've got the details marked on here, um, it's going to make life a little bit easier. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the soldering iron or wood burning tool, it's just the thin tip, and we're going to mark 
all of these details in nice and slowly. Obviously the slower we take it the better line we get. We do it a little bit slower than that. And obviously you need to put your mask on to do this. I'm going to put my mask on and we're going to do the rest of the, the detailing on here. Alright, so they're the only details that really need to be burnt on. These other ones were just guiding marks to keep me going. So we've done that, so we're going to get the rest of these done. And then we're going to heat them up and get them into some kind of shape. Okay, so now I've got the, the patterns done on all of them. We're going to heat them up with the heat gun um, quickly and get some curvature into it. There we go, so we've got a little bit of curve into it, we don't want to overdo it, but we'll get it in there, this will make it easier to get onto the gun. So we're going to do this with all four parts, then we'll be able to start assembling them. We've got some curve into those, just getting it right how we want it, so now we can bring in the, the main part. And what we're going to do is, obviously this is going to be stuck on here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the back end here, line these bits up, get them on glued properly but then what I'm going to do is come back around the front and make sure this front bit's in then that gives us the direction there and we can start gluing all in down the sides and then sort out this bit to wrap around so I'll glue around to the middle cut that bit off and then get that bit on and hopefully get them lined up and it goes on so I'm going to get these bits on and then I'll show you that what that looks like so there we are we've managed to get that bit on the top and the bottom that's really starting to look like the proper part now okay so we've just got the last few pieces of detail to add to this and then we'll be ready so our next pieces are you from the template you're going to want is piece 10 and 11 they're these funny little shaped pieces so we're going to cut these out of five mil foam and what we're going to do is they're going to go in the end of the barrel so we're going to get on with that now Right, so we've cut these pieces out, and um, there should be a bigger one and a smaller one, obviously, and I'll label them for the top and the bottom. And what they are, is they will go in the ends of our barrels, so we'll take the larger one, that will be curved, and will just sit in the bottom bit here, so we'll get that into position, get that glued in, and then the same for the bottom one. So these are quite simple, you just have to get them straight, and then they glue in the bottom part. So for our last piece that we need to add on is the back bit because obviously this is all open on the back. So you want to go um, with the template piece number 12 and obviously you can cut four of these. If you're feeling a little bit off and that this piece of template might not fit, what you can do is take your piece of the 5mm foam and you can just sit this on the edge and then draw around it and you'll get a more accurate piece to fit the way your gun has gone on. So it depends on how whichever way you want to do it, um, to which will be best. So I'm going to cut the four of these out and I'm going to go on the ends of the gun and then just the last little bit to finish it off. 
Okay, so we've got these end pieces on, and then what I've done just to cap it off is I've added this little um, button piece. Um, literally all this is is a piece of tubing like this. I've just pushed into the, the foam um, to create a little knob button come off of it. I've got loads of these because every so often you have to make a hole in the foam a certain size to fit a piece of tubing or something. And I save all these pieces because they do come in handy, but you can just make your own. It's simple just to cut it out like that. Um, then what I've done is I've taken the Dremel and I've just Dremeled around the edges of this just to um, kind of make it a bit more smooth and to fit in better. And obviously rounded this edge to try and make it like it's all one piece. But So there on, that's all now done as the gun as it stands. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to hit this with the, the heat gun just to seal the foam. I'm going to give it a couple of coats, thin coatings of uh, a latex and then we're going to give it a plastic primer and then I'm going to spray it with a black paint and then we'll come back to finish off the final details. Okay then, so these have now been coated in latex, they've been primed and I've sprayed them down with a satin black and that's given us a really nice um, finish here on, well, base on here on which to finish off. Um, so I'm going to keep these bits the same, but the rest of it we are now going to paint. And what I'm going to do is, for these top sections here, um, we're going to use a combination of dry brushing, um, just to put on there, to try and make it look like a brush metal um, silver. Um, and then these bits, so these lines I'm going to do in here are going to be silver, and then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to paint these bits in gold. And I think I'm going to hand paint that rather than trying to mask it off and spray it so I'm just going to get in there with the paintbrush as I do it so I'll do this silver do these lines silver and then I'll come back with the gold and I'll leave these front ones so it's just these two bits are going to be gold these two lines are going to be silver and the rest will be black and then obviously this outside bit so we're going to crack on with that now I'm going to show you the the dry brushing going on if you can see this I'm obviously getting in the brush and we're working it in nice and gently. This is quite a heavy dry brush, but hopefully it's going to give us that brush metal look. So we're going to try and get this all the way in down. And obviously the idea of doing this is that these lines that we burnt in will stay black because we're just obviously doing this on the outside. So we're going to get all of this silver done, top and bottom. And, and we can start looking at the last few details. Well, there we go, guys. That's all finished now. It's all dried up. Um, I'm quite pleased with how well this dry brushing has worked. I'm not sure how well you can see it there with the lights in here. I'm having a slight problem. I need to work on it a little bit, but I'm quite pleased with the way that's come out. The gold has really come out quite nicely and the solid silver. I think that really works on these parts here. But I'm quite pleased with how both of those look. That's how it comes out. Um, if you want, you can um, perhaps spray this silver um, and then use a black acrylic wash to add some weather into it to make it look not quite so clean and clinical. That's different ways. How you finish yours off is entirely up to you. I've just given you an idea of how this one goes. So there we go, guys. Um, please like, please subscribe. You should find a link in the description will take us to our Etsy page where you can get the templates that I've used on this. So if you want to build your own, you can purchase um, for just a couple of quid the, um, the template and build your own. If you do build your own, um, be sure to tag us if you use the templates and show us your creations, how well you did with yours. Um, but there we go. Please like, please subscribe. And um, I will hopefully see you in the next tutorial very soon.